Hi friends, I'm Cinnamon Johnson and today I'm going to share five tips to help you get better at photography fast. Okay, so the tips that I'm going to go over today can apply to any kind of photography that you want to do, whether it's landscape, uh, events, anything. Um, they're not genre specific and if you stick around to the end, I have a bonus tip that will kind of help put everything together and if you only follow one thing out of everything that I go over today, um, if it's the bonus tip, you're going to get better. You're going to get much better at your photography skills and you're going to be really happy looking back at your work and just watching it change over time. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, let's just keep watching. So all of these tips are with the idea that you already have a really good uh, handle of how to use your gear. And that doesn't really matter what your gear is or whether it's your, most of these tips would probably work with your cell phone or anything, um, but you want to know how to use the gear that you need to use to do what you're going to do as a baseline. But tip number one is to take lots of photos. And when I say lots, I mean like a lot of photos. I think that for each thing that you're trying to accomplish or each each new skill that you're trying to learn in photography, you're gonna wanna look, like spend a lot of time taking a lot of photos to do that. Uh, I've been looking back on my last, like on my photography journey, and there was a time period, so when I first got my camera, it's just learning how to use the gear and get really familiar with it. And there are, there's like a whole time period that is just taking pictures of everything that's happening around me. It's not really stuff that's set up and with Photoshop and all of that kind of thing. It's just whatever's happening, I'm taking pictures of it. And then on top of that, looking back through <laughs> way too many things saved that do not need to be saved. But um, looking back on my archives, noticing that there's so many pictures of just inanimate objects. Um, so whether I'm like trying to figure out how to work a particular setting, and so I'm taking a picture of the object, changing the settings, taking another picture, changing the settings a little, and just doing that over and over and over again. And then with that, just I carried my camera around just to take, so that I would have it to take pictures of everything. So needless to say, I took a lot of photos. And as you get better and as you continue to grow your skills, I think that that's still a constant. You may not need to just sit and take pictures of inanimate, inanimate objects. And at this point, I don't recommend carrying my camera around with me, but I do have my cell phone. And so I can take pictures on the go with my cell phone, um, kind of the same way that I was taking pictures back then with a camera, because times have changed. Back then, if you wanted to get a good picture, you needed a camera. I'm talking like 2010 to 2000, like 2013. Yeah, there were there were good camera phones out there, but they weren't great yet. Now you can take really good pictures with your cell phone, but um, but I don't take my DSLR, my big camera, around with me everywhere because in the process of all the photos that I've taken in all the places that I've carried my camera, I've learned that that's the biggest way or the easiest way to break something or lose something. Um, so now I'm really specific. Whenever I pull my camera out, it's for a specific reason. But I know it really well at this point. Like I know, um, I not only do I know how to shoot a manual, I know how to easily get to most of the settings that are in it. And so I'm not needing to practice those things while I'm working on other skills. So yeah, that would be my, my first tip is to do a ton of it, take a ton of photos. Okay, so tip number two is to uh, use a mood board or to design a mood board. Um, this is because like while you're taking lots of pictures, you're getting really familiar with your gear and really familiar with how pictures look. Um, but with a mood board, you're spending a lot of the time in your head. So you're, you're doing work inside your head. And I think that this practice just really develops the, um, the practice of being able to see your picture before it gets started and to visualize what you want to be in. Because it's one thing to take 
a bunch of photos and then get lucky here and there. It's another thing to say, I wanna take a picture of this or I want a picture to look like this and then to be able to replicate that and make that happen. Um, and so that process of looking at photos and thinking about how you would do it and then, or collecting them together and taking little parts here and there. Um, I think that for one thing, this leads to like some copycatting, but I also feel like that's part of the process. Like until you know what you like, you copy what you see. And then you get to a point where you're not copying everything from one picture. And I think that's, that's really hard to do anyways. Um, but you just collect little pieces from different pictures and then you put it together and you have your own work of art. And nothing in this world is brand new. Like ideas are passed around. Art is somewhat organic and fluid where we're all kind of stealing from each other a little bit. That's what inspiration is. Inspiration comes from the art that you see others create and that inspires you to create more art. Um, not saying that I don't often get like inspired by sunsets or things like that, but I'm inspired by light because light is a big part of photography. Like this essentially capturing light to create your art. So with tip number three, we're in the same theme here. Um, tip number three is to schedule time to take pictures. So just like with step number two, you're creating a mood board and you're working on that process of picturing something that you want and being able to create it. Now you're just developing, setting aside that time and space in your schedule to make habits where you're going to be doing these things. Whether that's you sit down and you have some time to go through other like Pinterest boards or Instagram or those kinds of things and look for inspiration or whether it's that you have the time to sit down and say, I'm going to, you know, do, uh, maybe it's, if you're a landscape photographer, maybe it's to schedule a hike so that you can go and get out in nature and take some of those pictures. And that's in between other things that you might want to do maybe, is just scheduling that time to get out there and do it. And as a portrait photographer, for me, it's scheduling time with human beings. <laughs> I've taken a lot of pictures of my cat uh, and my son and, anything that's anybody and anything that's around me. But yeah, just making sure that I schedule time with another person to sit down and it keeps me fresh on all of my processes and it keeps me producing fresh work and it helps make sure that, um, that I'm always moving forward and uh, growing my skills, not letting anything kind of um, get too stagnant for too long. So yeah, just um, schedule time. Okay, and my fourth tip would be to start looking at photos with the idea of ha trying to recreate or reverse engineer images that you like. So after you've already done your mood boarding and you've thought about like you've scheduled time to focus on creating and creating great images, um, now you're going to really try to study images that you're attracted to, things that you like, think about what you like about them and start working on creating those kinds of things for yourself. This is also a study of light. When you're taking pictures, what you're doing is capturing light. So if you can get your mind into this kind of process of looking at an image and deciding exactly where the light is or how things had to come together to create that image, it's a really good exercise for you to be able to kind of see the light and imagine it uh, in real time when you're creating your own work. So, okay. My fifth tip would be to learn the rules so that when you break them, you know why you're breaking them. Photography is uh, subjective and it's art. So the rules that are in place are there to be broken. You've probably heard that lots of times. And breaking some of the rules is what kind of help your photography stand out from other people's. And what will make your unique perspective uh, more impactful. However, if you're just breaking rules that you don't even know that they're rules to begin with and you just just taking photos, then it's likely that your photos will blend in with the array of every other person out there with a camera just taking photos. 
Um, but if you want to get better at it and you want to develop your own sense of like your own style or your own, your own, if you want to create your own unique perspective into an art form, such as photography, then learn all of the rules of your genre and do your best to get, and then when you're, when you're breaking them, know exactly why you're breaking that rule. I've used landscape photography as an example multiple times, even though like I'm a portrait photographer, so the rules are often a little <laughs> quite different. But um, if you are like say a landscape photographer, there are certain rules on where you want your horizontal to be and your, hor your horizon line in your image. But you may choose to have your horizon line in a different location if it perhaps like emphasizes a particular mountain peak or a tree or something like that. There are, so even though you may in every other one of your photos follow particular rules or guidelines, there are those times and places where it's okay to break them. And knowing the, knowing the difference is what will show your work kind of a level up from other people's. If you're just taking photos and not paying attention to, uh, you know, the rules at all, then that's gonna show up in your work too. Most of the rules and faux pas and images are there because of kind of either psychological tweaks where it kind of bothers us or pulls our attention away, which when you are creating something and you want it to be impactful and you want it to speak, then all everything in the photo should be going towards that. Whatever your narrative is, whatever you're trying to highlight, it should be evident and if you have something that's kind of distracting from that then it's going to affect your images so make sure to learn the rules and then you can break them okay so that's your five top tips to help you grow your photography skills regardless of what gear any gear that you want to use any genre you want to shoot you can use these five tips to up level your photography skills and get better fast um, and since you've done, you've watched this long, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for watching and following along with these five tips. And so your bonus tip, since you've waited so long for it, is to, uh, to be intentional. Uh, everything else that I've talked about has really kind of, this is kind of the glue that holds it all together. The really, the main thing that's going to make your photography get better is to be intentional with what you do. Um, whenever I do a photo shoot, I will think it beforehand of, I already have my workflow, I already have all of my systems in place, I already have things that I like because I've done it a lot. I've scheduled the time, I've looked at photos, I've got years of all of this process. So now whenever I shoot, like there's a whole list of things that are gonna be the same every time because that's how I do it. I think that it's the best to do it, to do those things in that way because I've developed it that way. But I'm also gonna have a some specific things that I want to make sure to really nail this um, for this specific photo shoot or what I'm working on right now. And here lately it's been to remember to get video because I'm terrible to about remembering to get video along with it. I get in a photo shoot and I just, I can take pictures all day long and I'll just space out and forget that I also want to get video clips. But, um, but yeah, so being intentional is the number one thing that is going to help you get better at photography. And I think that as a, like with some of the steps that I did are more mental exercises than they are even physical exercises. And with that, the being intentional part is part of that. So I think that it's intentionally thinking about photography, like the complexities and, and things that make it impactful. And one of, and one of the ways of like being intentional with it is to keep in mind that even though you're creating a 2D image, that you can use this three-dimensional space to also create depth and textures. So yes, you want, you definitely want good lighting. Lighting is, lighting is the sauce that makes photography. It just is. It doesn't matter what you're photographing, you're photographing light. Yeah, so that's your five tips to start getting better at photography right away. You can up-level your skills and apply any of these things right now. What we didn't talk about, we didn't go over any kind of gear. We didn't talk about styling. We didn't talk about lighting, posing, post-processing, or anything to do with your subject, which is 
the most important thing to, that you're in your photo, right? Is what you're taking a photograph of. But um, yeah, let me know if, any, if there's anything that you'd like to hear about, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and I will talk to you next time. Thanks.